Hello, well, everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Online Meetup. Um, today, we will be talking about uh, using uh, the Tecton client plugin with Jenkins and using Tecton from Jenkins. Our presenters today are Vipha, for James and Garrett. Uh, thanks a lot for your time and for joining the call. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so today we have uh, three Meetup hosts, Himadri, Kara, and me. Uh, we will be doing all the logistics and helping with Kone and the discussion. And yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, next slide. Okay, so yeah, just quick summary about Jenkins Online Meetup. So it's a meetup organized by Jenkins contributors for users. So we mostly focus on uh, case studies, sparse stories, uh, on presentations, live demos, and on live discussion. So you can see from this slide that we don't care too much about slides, uh, but we really care about the, the discussion and we invite you to participate in the chat and we will have uh, Kune there. If you want to know more about Jenkins Online Meetup, uh, there is a Meetup uh, page, uh, which is basically our landing. And there is also online Meetup description on uh, the events page with more information. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, just quick heads up, uh, there will be a few other events soon. So the upcoming webinar um, is on uh, May 27th about Kubernetes Creator for Jenkins. This time it will be in EMEA in, a, in a America's time zone. Um, and as you may have noticed, we are recovering the series of Jenkins on Kubernetes meetups. So stay tuned for more announcements. Uh, also, uh, there is a uh, Cubes uh, FA and Jenkins meetup coming soon. Uh, in uh, June, we will have CDCon with a lot of uh, Jenkins content. This is a free to participate online conference. So please uh, register and uh, yeah, later we'll send links. Um, then um, on uh, June 25th, we will have Jenkins Contributor Summit. One of the topics today will be Jenkins on cloud platforms, including Kubernetes. And, and uh, we plan to have discussions about Tikton and Jenkins interoperability there. So if you're interested in this topic, please join. And uh, in September, we will have DevOps World, again, with strong community agenda. Uh, over the past two weeks, we've been doing Jenkins online meetups, uh, describing community agenda and, and call for papers. So please take a look. Um, and yeah, it's still possible to submit uh, your talks there. Next slide. So, and yeah, since we are talking about Jenkins on Kubernetes, uh, we are looking for speakers. So any topics related to Jenkins and Kubernetes are welcome. So we are Case studies, whether it's automation, uh, uh, plugins for Kubernetes, we have dozens of them in Jenkins, and the, you might be working on something else. Also, any parts of ecosystems like Jenkins, Helm charts, operators, uh, basically anything uh, is interesting, as well as integrations with Kubernetes tools, like let's say Open Policy Agent, uh, Prometheus, and whatever else we have in cloud native ecosystem. Uh, so, that's the quick introduction. If you want to speak, uh, there is a link um, online meetup speaking. I will post a link to slides uh, just uh, once I finish, and uh, we invite any kinds of presentations. So, uh, Himadri, Kara, would you like to add something? So, uh, yeah, hello, hello, everyone. So, mm -hmm. this uh, Jenkins online community is really interesting community, and I also joined recently, so like request, if anyone is interested to join the community, please do so. There are a lot of things to work and a lot of things to learn from others as well. So, and it will be fun learning and uh, a lot of things from the community. So uh, if anyone is interested, please do contact. That's print from my side. Hi all. Um, I'll just say that we also have a cloud native SIG, which runs every Friday. And I've put the link in the chat. It's on um, the Jenkins IO site among our SIGs. We discuss a lot of cloud native initiatives. You can bring your own ideas. We've discussed the Tekton Client plugin there a lot, as well as other initiatives that are happening in the cloud native Jenkins space. So please do join us. Thank you. And next slide, please. So, oh, there should have been a Kuni slide, which I apparently, yeah, it's, it will be just next slide, <laughs> sorry. Okay, uh, so yeah, just to quickly summarize how we are, do this uh, meetup. So speakers will do the presentation. 
and then we will have a Zoom Kuni. So at any time during the meetup, please feel free to ask the question. And uh, our meetup hosts will either process this question offline or ask speakers when there is an opportunity. After the meetup, we will have open discussion. So basically, once we finish with all questions, we will uh, stop the recording and uh, grant everyone voice permissions so that you can ask any question uh, of the record. Uh, related to Tecton, related to Jenkins, maybe something unrelated. Uh, you're welcome. It's basically our equivalent of after party. And of course, we invite all speakers uh, to stay as well. After the meetup, as Kara said, uh, we have um, Cloud Native Seek. Um, please uh, use uh, the link shared in the chat. And also, there is Cloud Native Seek Gitter, where you can ask any questions related to this presentation offline. And there is also interrupt reliability seek in the continuous delivery foundation where both Jenkins and Tecton projects are represented. And this is also a good channel uh, to ask questions. I will add uh, the links uh, during the presentation. So that's it. Again, Zoom Q&A for questions and we will have a lot of opportunities for discussion after the webinar. And yes, yeah, sorry for missing a couple slides. If you could return one slide back and yeah, we just want to welcome uh, Garrett, James, and we um, Thanks a lot again for joining uh, the meetup and for working on the Tecton client plugin. It's a great addition to the Jenkins ecosystem uh, for everyone who wants to use Jenkins in cloud native environments. And we are looking forward to your presentation. Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for joining today's uh, online meetup on using the Tecton client plugin. Um, my name is Vibhav and I work at Red Hat. Uh, I work with uh, Red Hat given Jenkins images and uh, uh, OpenShift specific plugins in Red Hat. And I also work on Tecton on the side. So I'll let you continue uh, James and Garrett with the introductions. Oh, shall I go next? Uh, I'm James Strachan. I used to work at Red Hat. Um, a few years ago, now I work at Clubbies, uh, and I work mostly on Jenkins X and Tecton, but a little bit of Jenkins as well. And I'm Gareth. I've never worked at Red Hat, and I used to work at Cloudbees. Um, uh, I'm currently in between roles, but yeah, I work at, worked at Cloudbees on uh, Jenkins X and Jenkins. Um, Let's uh, move on to the agenda. Uh, so today we'll be uh, going over a few things related to the Tecton client plugin. First, we'll understand what Tecton itself is, get a little bit of an introduction, uh, get acquainted to some facts about Tecton. Then we'll see uh, why uh, we've decided to make this plugin itself and see the differences between Jenkins, Tecton, some of the paradigms and some problems because of which uh, which which we are trying to solve. Then we look at how to install uh, Tecton and Jenkins so that uh, we can use it with the Tecton client plugin. And then we look at a demo which Gareth will give for the Tecton client plugin. And then after that, uh, we'll see what is next for the plugin itself. So yeah, let's start with understanding Tecton and Getting, getting to know Tecton. So uh, Tecton is a CI CD tool for Kubernetes and it is used to create declarative pipelines with uh, CRDs. Each resource in Tecton is actually a custom resource definition in Kubernetes. So it is, uh, it is built using the building blocks that Kubernetes itself provides to create something uh, a, like create a custom controller. And uh, Considering it's uh, Kubernetes native, it's built with everything that Kubernetes provides and uh, it's built to be able to provide serverless pipelines. And this is done through uh, using containers uh, as individual uh, steps in, by, in tasks. And we'll talk about more about that later. And it's uh, it also gives a powerful user interface. It has its own uh, command line tool dashboard and you can you can basically use anything that you can use in Kubernetes with Tecton using our including our back and uh, there are a lot of integrations which you can use 
such as custom tasks which uh, direct with which you can directly use uh, uh, your own other custom resource definitions to watch them and do other stuff but that's a different story let's uh, let's move on to uh, some of the basic tecton concepts we'll will be using today and which we'll need to know for using the plugin uh, so so uh, uh, the where the most basic element in a pipeline in tecton <clears throat> is a step and a step is basically uh, an ex a execution that happens in a container so a step is uh, can be a parallel to the step can be a container parallel to the task can be a pod and a pipeline basically or is an orchestration of those tasks so when we define a task we are basically define multiple steps which run linearly and each of those steps run in uh, containers of their own and when we create a task uh, it is basically a template with which we can uh, with which we can use uh, to build a task run a task run is nothing but a pod and when we when a task run is defined and all the steps in the task runs are running these steps are actually running in containers of themselves in the task run pod so that's how the parallels are drawn uh, from tecton to kubernetes and when we create a pipeline run a pipeline run which is a graph of tasks uh, it a pipeline run which is a graph of tasks it is basically orchestrating all these tasks which are already created and seeing the order of execution in that way so these are a few concepts which we'll be using today pipeline resources was used for inputs and outputs to tasks and pipelines but now it's deprecated um let's let's move on to a little diagram to see what the uh, execution actually looks like so when we create a pipeline run the it is created based off of a pipeline which is already defined uh, to which we can give inputs and outputs and such and each task in a pipeline is uh, each task in a pipeline uh, runs as a task run after the pipeline run is created and each task run runs uh, is nothing but a pod which is that and each step runs as a container so when you have a task run it directly draws a parallel to a pod in which the steps are running in containers themselves which can be shared uh, which use the shared environment of the or uh, which whatever we are sharing in, in that case we, we can share workspaces and everything and uh, you can also see to it that multiple task runs are sharing or uh, sharing an environment by uh, giving them a, a persistent volume which they can sh share to uh, to kind of uh, manage resources between themselves and do certain things which need a shared uh, context so this is this is what it looks like when you are running a tecton pipeline and we and we would be using this these concepts to uh, to help us run pipelines in kubernetes and tecton helps with that and what the tecton client plugin does is it helps you use tecton for this stuff and users don't have to learn uh, how to use most of kubernetes all they need to know is how how to define their pipelines and how simple community stuff works and they basically then uh, imp uh run their pipelines on kubernetes after that so let's move on to like what it looks like uh what it looks like right now to use a tecton pipe or tecton plugin versus what it used to look like running jenkins pipelines on kubernetes james stratton uh, would take over thank you Thank you. So um, you might be looking at Tecton and looking at Jenkins and thinking like, what's the point? Well, why is this different? It's the same, but different. From 30,000 feet, it's conceptually the same. It's a way of running pipelines on Kubernetes. Um, it's one of those things that the devil's all in the details, that the implementations are completely different. But from 30,000 feet, you can write a pipeline in Jenkins and you can write a pipeline in Tecton and you, Jenkins can trigger the Tecton pipeline. So from 30,000 feet, it's the same. Where things differ is how it all works under the covers. Now, as you probably know, if you use Jenkins quite a bit, when you use Jenkins and you run lots of Jenkins pipelines, all of the pipelines run in a single process, the Jenkins controller. So the Jenkins controller is where all the pipelines run 
And the Jenkins controller then orchestrates all of the steps that run in all the pipelines using remoting and chattiness. So if even if you're using Jenkins with the Kubernetes agent and the Kubernetes plugin, you're spinning up pods on Kubernetes, which then chat to the Jenkins controller and the Jenkins controller is talking all the time about run step one, now run step two, now run step three. So it's very chatty. Uh, and the Jenkins controller is a single point of failure. There's all sorts of various other issues that a Jenkins pipeline typically has lots of Jenkins plugins to be able to implement itself. So you need to align your Jenkins file and the agent and the controller so all the plugins are, are of the right version and set up correctly so that your pipeline can run. With Tecton, a Tecton pipeline is completely standalone. So each step of each task is completely arbitrary. You can use any image anywhere on the internet for any step. And those images are only used by that one pipeline. So you could have 100 pipelines running in parallel, all with completely different plugins, to use the Jenkins term, and there's no issue. There's no version conflicts. There's no uh, issues about plugin versions not matching other plugin versions. So it's really easy to put all of your versioning in the Tecton side of the house and have a very simple controller that doesn't need to change very much. So in terms of making it easy to become more cloud native, the more you can make your pipelines completely standalone, the easier it is to operate your pipelines over time. There's another big difference in the whole networking. So a traditional Jenkins pipeline, every if you're using say the Kubernetes plugin or the Kubernetes agents, you need to install the JNLP agent into every pod. And then there's this remoting chattiness that happens between the controller and the agent to tell it to run each step in turn. As an end user, you then have to write say a pod YAML to define all of your container images. And then your Jenkins file has to refer to step containers in your pod YAML. So you're constantly working on two separate files, remembering which step runs in which container name and what was the image again and where is everything installed. We detect on each step is just completely standalone. It's basically an image and a command. So it's really, really easy to define multiple steps, keep them all uh, uh, related to each other and separate in a separate file. Uh, let's do the next step. Um, the next slide, sorry, Gary. Um, so generally think of Tecton as similar to Jenkins pipelines, but it's just another way of doing it by trying to reuse the Kubernetes platform more. Um, so when uh, with a traditional Jenkins pipeline, the Jenkins controller is starting, uh, invoking each step, checking what each step does and so on and so forth. When it comes to Tecton, basically the Kubernetes orchestrator is running each pipeline. The Tecton controller initializes, turns each pipeline into a pod. Once a pod is created, you're just using the normal Kubernetes orchestrator. So if a pod dies, Kubernetes will automatically restart it. So your pipelines restart themselves magically. If a machine that the pipeline is running on dies, it's started automatically on another machine for you. That's reusing essentially the Kubernetes orchestrator. So your pipelines are, are serverless in that there's no long running controller that's orchestrating it, just Kubernetes orchestrates it. Uh, so there's no single point of failure per se for your cluster. Uh, another big difference, and again, it's implementation detail from 30,000 feet you don't notice, is um, the tr traditional approach with Jenkins is tends to be put, put everything in one big container image, but all the tools you possibly need in one big image. With Tecton, we tend to avoid kitchen sink images, and we just tend to, each step, we'll just use one particular image, like you'll use the upstream Maven image or the upstream node image or the upstream kubectl image. And you'll tie them all together into multiple steps. There are similarities between the two in that there's a shared file system in a Jenkins pipeline and a Tecton pipeline. Um, so they are conceptually similar, uh, but in terms of getting the most out of Kubernetes, they're, they're hugely different. Now it's worth remembering, by the way, if you're using Jenkins already and you're using Kubernetes and you're maybe using the Kubernetes plugin or using Kubernetes agents, Tecton doesn't take anything away, right? We're not saying get rid of what you have today, but we're saying consider using Tecton as a way of improving. Improving to make your pipelines more self-contained. So each pipeline is truly self-sufficient and is not coupled with anything else. It also makes your pipelines more reliable. With Jenkins, it's quite easy to write a bad pipeline that takes down your entire controller, which then breaks all of your pipelines. With Tecton, you could write the worst pipeline you could imagine. And if that pipeline dies, that pipeline dies, but it doesn't affect any of the other pipelines. So um, this kind of serverless model in Tecton does make it easier 
to develop pipelines that are independent of each other and make it easy to scale all of your pipelines without worrying about how many Jenkins controllers you have and so forth. Uh, next slide, Gareth, please. Oh, in fact, let's go over to you, Gareth, for how to install it, shall we? Yeah. So it, this is a, um, it's, it's a slightly more involved installation than a standard um, a plugin to get the Tecton client plugin working. Um, so we've, you, you, you obviously need access to a Kubernetes cluster to get Tecton installed and have that running. You don't necessarily need to be running um, Jenkins itself on, uh, on the, the same Kubernetes cluster, it could be a different cluster. It could even be uh, running on a on a VM somewhere. It doesn't have to be the same thing, um, but it's just it gives you more options. Um, so what what our recommendation is that we use um, we install Jenkins and Tecton into different namespaces. Um, you can use just use the standard Jenkins Helm charts to install Jenkins. Um, keep it nice and simple. Uh, the Helm chart has the ability to specify additional plugins uh, when you want to install. They get automatically downloaded and configured. So, it, it, and and with all of its dependencies that they will need, so you can configure that section. Um, and then by putting Tecton into a separate namespace. Now, when you run the Jenkins Helm chart, Jenkins runs as a Jenkins service account. So, what you'll need to do is give permission for Jenkins to be able to access the Tecton, Tecton resources in the other namespace. Um, if you go onto the, um, I don't have a link here, but onto the um, Tecton client plugin uh, GitHub page, there is a, a doc with some uh, installation instructions, which gives you the role binding um, that you will need to create to allow that access. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. And it, you, know, you can apply that using Helm or just a straight kubectl apply if you need to. Um, some of the demos you can, or some of the, if you want to just try it out, if you're running it locally and you've installed Jenkins manually, you'll probably be running as cluster admin, which in which case you don't really need to give any permission because you have all the permission you need. So just like I said, yeah, it's a standard Jenkins CI Helm chart. Um, so this is, this is kind of describing the environment that I'm going to do a quick demo on now. Does anyone, James or Vibab, do anyone want to add anything or have we got any questions to answer before we go into the demo? Uh, we've got yeah. one question. That I'm just answering it on the chat, which was pipeline as code. So how, how about we do the demo and then we'll keep going with questions at the end. Okay. Yeah, sure. that's uh, the best approach because I believe this question will be answered during the presentation. And if anyone has more questions, please don't hesitate to ask them. I will uh, make sure to process all of them. We have plenty of time today for that. Cool. So I'm just going to stop sharing and share my desktop instead. Uh, just, just get rid of the slides there. Okay. So I'm just gonna show you this. So can, is that coming through okay? Somebody give me a thumbs up. Yeah, cool. Okay, great. So this is, uh, this is a local test server that I have running. Um, it is using uh, Docker desktop for Mac with its inbuilt sort of Kubernetes support. So it's not kind, but it kind of is. It's like a local Kubernetes cluster uh, with Docker nodes. Um, what do they have to do to it to get it working? Well, the only thing you really have to do is install an ingress controller. Um, that's, that's just the, the point to remember because by default, everything is running on localhost, but you can't access it. So just, just as a, a point to note there. Um, so what I have, I have, I have, I'm gonna show you on some namespaces here. So, Let's get this in the middle and make it nice and clear. So I have Jenkins installed inside the Jenkins namespace. 
and Tecton installed inside the Tecton pipeline namespace. Uh, and you can see the ingress, which is just an Nginx ingress controller running there. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what we do is we, we tend to use a custom image for Jenkins to download plugins automatically um, and build them in so that we're not downloading on restart. It, it tends to reduce pod restart time uh, and keep it consistent with the versions that we, we know are there. Um, so uh, if we go and have a look at Jenkins, just see what it looks like. I'll switch to Jenkins namespace. You can see here we have, we've got a pod running. It's been running a little while. It seems to be going okay. We've got some agents and yeah, it's all configured in a stateful set, which is the new uh, Helm chart version three version way of doing it. Um, so one thing to one thing to note is that my because this is running locally and running on local host, I don't have any webhooks configured from GitHub to talk to this cluster. So I'm going to have to invoke some jobs manually. Um, so what I want to show you, I have a, a, a repository here. Um, go back into my main branch. So I have a, have a repository here where this is my sort of test repo. It is available on GitHub. I can put the links up or you'll be able to see it. Um, inside the repo, I've created a .tecton folder with a hello world YAML. And that is a simple, that is a pipeline run, which has embedded pipelines and tasks inside it. So if I open this up, you can see I'm generating a name when it comes through. I have configured a workspace. A workspace is, um, as James was saying earlier, a shared volume that can be used um, between tasks and it's kind of passed between them. Uh, you do, there are some things that you need to be aware of, um, but that they're sort of tech on uh, specific things uh, in, in the order that tasks run to make sure that it gets correctly passed um, between them because it will try to sort of optimize the, the running of the tasks a little bit. And then in here, I have a pipeline spec. Now I've defined a number of parameters, um, three of these. Now these, these values are actually dynamically set by the Tecton client plugin. So it will uh, clone the repo. It, it sort of has a look at it. It knows um, whether you're building a branch or a PR and it passes that information on to Tecton so that you get a correct, you correctly build a sort of a, a PR or the main branch or however it is that you have configured. Um, so I am, this next task is using the git clone task straight from the Tecton catalog that I've, so I've installed that task manually into the namespace and then I can reuse that task by referring to it with a task ref. Um, and I pass in the repo URL and the, the shard that I want to clone, and it will clone that application, clone, clone the repo for me at the particular point, um, either on the branch or on the pull request that I've submitted. The next task that I'm running, I want to build the application. Um, I've specified that it wants to run after the fetch repo command and uses the same workspace just to make sure that I have actually got the source there. Um, and I am using a Golang image. Now, this is the, one of the really nice things about Tecton is I don't have to create a, um, an image based off, I don't know, Ubuntu and have everything installed onto it. So all of my build tools and the right version of Golang and all of that stuff, I can just use the, the proper upstream images that are official and supported. I know exactly what's in them. I, you know, I use Golang 115 and I'm, I'm basically calling make. Um, it, I will say this, this application is, very basic, it, it just has one file in it, so it, it doesn't really do much. Um, but just to, I, just this is just to highlight how it kind of, how it works together. And then I'm doing a Docker build. So I run after, I want to build my Docker image after I built the application. I'm using the Canico task. So Canico is a sort of an in-cluster um, Docker builder. So it means that you don't have to mount the Docker agent, uh, the Docker socket, sorry. Um, and you, it, it runs sort of natively inside a Kubernetes cluster. 
um, and and yeah, it's, it's a lot more secure than trying to use a Docker daemon. Um, no. And just because I haven't got uh, the credential to push to my Git rep to my uh, um, Docker Hub installed yet, uh, I've just put no push as an extra args just so I'm building the image, but I'm not doing anything. Cool. So that's what my pipeline looks like. So I'm going to move this. Let's move that out of the way for a second, just so we can see it working. I am going to switch to the Tecton client namespace. And I'm just going to watch the pods that are running in there just so you can see them start up. And hopefully this text is big enough for you to see. If it's not, just give, please give me a shout. And then on this window here, I'm going to watch the pipeline runs. So you can use PRS as a shorthand for that. There should be nothing there yet. So back to my Jenkins instance. Discover my repo onto the main branch. And I'm just going to click build now. And I'm going to have a look at the logs. So this is a standard pipeline. Nice and simple. I'll I'll show you I'll show you what the pipeline actually looks like to trigger this, but it it could be a um, a free, freestyle job as well as a pipeline or a multi branch or you know, this is just standard things to, to to kick it off. You can see the pods have started. The, the pipelines pipeline runs have created. They're running in a running state. Um, it has created three pods. It's actually created four pods because Tecton has a, an affinity assistant to help it help things run on the same nodes. Um, but we have three different pods, one for one to build the application, one to docker build, and it's it's going through. Now you can see on the on the left hand side, the logs are being streamed nicely. Um, and that is pretty much it. So you can see that that pipeline was was very fast in terms of pod startup time. There was no extra JVMs or agents that needed to be started to, to run that. It was very quick. Um, Obviously, if it's the first time you're running a pipeline, it probably will need to download those Docker images. It can take a bit longer, but uh, um, that's once they're once they're on the node, they're cached and they're nice and quick. Um, and you can see here, we you know we have some nice reuse of the um, components there. Cool. So I was just going to quickly show. Let's just make this bigger. What the actual pipeline looked like for that. So I'm using a Jenkins pipeline, standard Jenkins pipeline. Um, I'm saying you can run on any agent. Uh, I, I need to put the checkout SCM um, step in there because uh, otherwise I don't get all of the environment variables set. So if you use, if you configure this as a pipeline, you do. If you configure it as a multi-branch pipeline, you don't. It's just something to be aware of. Um, so you need to put that step in there, make sure it sets the, um, all the right environment variables that, that the Tecton client plugin can then interrogate and set uh, and pass on to Tecton as parameters. Um, and then the, the interesting line there is the Tecton create raw. So it, it creates a raw resource based off that uh, Hello World YAML. It's, it's a file. There are other types that it supports. You can inline YAML here if you want. Um, or you can specify a remote URL if you want to download from something straight from the catalog or um, somewhere else. And I'm specifying a Tecton namespace here to do this. Um, I've got some, I've got a couple of PRs that I can show on local branches. I'll just show the code that I think. Um, So this is this is quite nice. So what one of the things that Tecton is really good at is is kind of like it allows you to build up or, or compose your own pipelines from multiple tasks that already exist. So somebody could create 
a, a task that is installed into your cluster and that, that task can be reused by multiple pipelines. And like that's how, that's the sort of basis of the, of the Tecton catalog. So one of the quite nice things we have, so we have a, I'm just gonna show this small piece here. So this is using the JX release version from JX, which is a, which is a plugin to interrogate Git and calculate what the next version for a release should be based on the sort of conventional commit history. Um, and this is a way that you could create a task um, and, and, and make it sort of share it within a cluster um, if you wanted to. Um, so it creates a next version as a result of this task that can then be used further on in the pipeline. Um, and writing writing to the file Tecton results Dex version that's that's the Tecton way of sharing almost a sharing state really between um, steps task and how I'm using that here is that when I want to build my Docker application now I can refer to the version here I can pull it straight out. And the other one I'm going to go to is so this is a an example of a, a more complex Jenkins file that uses kind of some of the standard pipeline features that you can do. So if I want to if I wanted to run a, a different pipeline on on a change request. As, as to my main branch or my release branch, you, you can use standard semantics in here to tell it what to run. Cool. So that is pretty much what I have as a demo. I'll stop sharing and switch back to, has anyone got any questions about the demo whilst someone here yeah there were some questions uh, which uh, seem to be related to the demo so the okay. first question uh, was asked uh, if you want to have a pipeline as code method how should we get a formal implementation i believe we answered this question during the uh, presentation if not please um, follow up um so the next question is uh, should we, how should we decide uh, the choice of tools it depends of where we're migrating from I guess it's rather a question of whether we use Tikton or whether we use classic Jenkins pipeline or maybe containers under the hood. So what do you think about that? That's a great question. I think um, uh, one of the main things to think about is what Jenkins plugins are you using? Like if you specifically want to use a particular Jenkins plugin, that's going to dictate how much Jenkins file you use versus how much Tekton you use. The sweet spot of Tekton is I just want to run, you know, a make and go or, or node, and I want to run a bunch of tools together. And then when that's finished, I might want to do something in Jenkins with the Jenkins file. So getting that split between the Jenkins file and Tekton is really, are you using a Jenkins plugin or not? If you're literally just like a lot of pipelines, you're just doing like a Maven stuff or a node stuff or go stuff or whatever, that stuff can just be in Tekton. It's nice and simple and easy and standalone. But if you really want to use the Jenkins stash plugin or the Jenkins report plugin or whatever, then ship state to the Jenkins controller and then do stuff in your Jenkins file. But it is one of those things. Sometimes if you know Jenkins really well, you're probably going to do things more in Jenkins than Tekton. And it's one of those finding the right balance and find the right tool for the job. Yeah, at least it uh, provides some freedom. And if exactly. you ask uh, Jenkins experts, heavy users, uh, Actually, the recommendation is to do less in Jenkins. Literally, yeah. there is a presentation named like that by Jesse Gleek at one of Jenkins walls, 2017, I believe. Because the recommendation, if you use common build tools like Maven, Gradle, whatever, uh, delegate more to these tools um, and use Jenkins exactly. basically as a rocker, uh, as a specific integration. I mean, this is still very early in the, the Tekton plugins life. I mean, it's still, it's mm -hmm. only just gone one zero. So we, we still, I think, need to build up this kind of best practice kind of recommendations of how we think you should be using this. But I, I, th I think you're right, Oleg. I think 
the more we can push uh, delegate operations to the underlying tools like Gradle, Never, 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 whatever. And that stuff tends itself more easily to Tecton and let Jenkins be the orchestrator of those things. So, you know, what do you need to do before Tecton and after Tecton? One thing we could do with improving is um, helping make it easier to get state from the Tecton pipeline to the Jenkins controller. Like in Jenkins, we've often used stash and unstash and those kind of things inside of a step because we've often had, and this is often, I found this really confusing when I first started in Jenkins. You might have a pipeline and you think the pipeline is running on, a, on a, a node somewhere, but it's actually running on the, the controller. And you're never quite sure where the step, is it running on the agent or is it running in the controller? Where's the state? And you've got to stash and unstash and it is a bit kind of confusing. It would be kind of nice to have very simple canonical steps in Tecton land that we can just say, I finished my Tecton pipeline now, upload all of this state to the controller so that after we, we go back to the Jenkins file, we can then you know, use any of the standard Jenkins plugins for know, JUnit reporting or something like that. So it'd be nice to polish the experience a bit more so that after Tecton has happened, you can use state from inside Tecton um, in Jenkins and vice versa. But yeah, I, I think we're all gradually learning to improve in this space. Um, yeah. Anything back from users will be appreciated. So the plugin has been just released as 1.0. Uh, there are GitHub issues. Uh, I believe uh, the team will later show the links. So if you try it out, if you have any ideas, please use it as a channel for feedback. And it will be much appreciated. So there is another question. Um, is uh, build log remained in Jenkins, even if I delete uh, pipeline run resource from Kubernetes? Yes, it's a quick answer, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a great answer, thank you. <laughs> Although if you then delete the Jenkins controller pod, the log is on a persistent volume usually in, in Kubernetes. So if the pod comes back and the same persistent volume is there, then you still keep your log. Well, it's worth saying that even if you're just using Jenkins, so forget Tecton for a second, even if you're just using Jenkins, you should get configure your Jenkins to back up all of your logs and artifacts to long-term cloud storage, like a bucket or something, because you can use your Jenkins controllers. And if you're not careful, you can use your persistent volumes. Um, I, I, I've deleted clusters by accident quite a lot of times in my life. Um, and often you, the persistent volumes stick around, but they don't always. So um, yeah, make sure you put everything in long-term cloud storage if you can. James, do you, do you want to talk briefly about the um, the catalog stuff, uh, the, the JX catalog stuff? Yeah. Because I, I, I can't, I ha don't have a demo for that. But, um, that's quite all yeah. right. That's quite right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this, it's a slightly long story. So I've been on a very long journey over the last kind of five or eight years of building and deploying pipelines across many repositories. And we started off in the early days with Jenkins shared libraries and then using Jenkins shared libraries across repositories and then gradually kept iterating and iterating. Then we got, we started Jenkins X and we started generating Jenkins files. Then we started to use Tecton. Then we tried using Tecton on the tool called Kept with KPT from Google, which is a way of sharing YAMLs across Git repository, which is pretty cool. And we've been on this long journey of continually improving. How can we effectively share pipelines across repositories? So let me step back for a second. Imagine you're uh, a company and you have 10 microservices and those 10 microservices all need pipelines for dealing with CI and pull requests and dealing with releases. If those 10 microservices are all say Node or Java, the pipelines are probably exactly the same. So you want to share those pipelines. You don't want to keep maintaining 10 separate huge chunks of YAML. But sometimes one of those microservices wants to do one thing different. You want to do a step before you release or after you release. So you want to generate some extra docs or you want to do something different. Um, so you've got this classic problem. How do we customize a pipeline for one repository but maximize reuse across all of the repositories and not have a maintenance nightmare? So we've been trying to kind of work on this kind of tricky problem for a number of years with various efforts. In the Jenkins X community, the one we've come up with now is we borrowed a trick from, um, there's a tool called Ko, K-O in the Go community for building container images. And there's a tool called Mink from the Knative community. And that's for, again, building container images. 
And they used a little trick where they used a magic image tag. They used a magic image tag. In their case, they do Docker build. So we decided, why don't we use a magic image tag so we can write canonical Tekton pipeline. So it's 100% Tekton, there's no DSL, there's no wrapping, there's no code generation, it's just vanilla Tekton. But we can post-process that Tekton and expand magic tags. So we have a magic uses tag on images, which basically lets us reuse a whole task from a catalog or just a, a specific step from a catalog. Now this might sound a little bit weird and wonderful, but the basic idea is all of the pipelines we use in Jenkins X, they're all pipeline as code, they're all stored in the Git repository of the microservice. But we don't reference any specific image tags or commands in any of those steps. We just reference a version of a, of a step in a library. And then this means we can then override any step in any repository to use a different version, a different image, a different command, a different whatever. So we can override any of the step method anyway. But at the same time, we can share a definition across repositories. So it gives us this kind of dual um, optimization of we can share, we can upgrade all the pipelines together without having to do pull requests on every single one of your microservices. But we've always got that get out of jail free card that we can just change one step in any pipeline whenever we want. And then once we're happy with it, we can then migrate it upwards to our shared library. So it's this, it is a really thorny problem, right? In CI CD, how do you share pipelines everywhere, but use pipelines as code, but allow microservices the independence to do things differently. And then over time, align things. So you don't have a maintenance nightmare. It's a, it's a super hard problem. Unless you tried to solve this before, you don't realize how really hard this is. So to cut a long story short, we have this user syntax which is just a magic string on your images. Um, we've added that support into the Tekton uh, client plugin for Jenkins. So if your Tekton YAML has this uses syntax, um, you can then reuse that pipeline. So any of the Jenkins X pipelines, you can just use them inside Jenkins via uh, the, Jen the Tekton plugin. The only one thing you need to do is in the Jenkins um, configuration, you need to enable the Tekton catalog flag in the Jenkins plugin, which basically then triggers this post-processing step that it basically looks at any of these uses uh, uh, tags and then inlines whatever that step really is. So it's, it's a form of reuse. You can think of it as kind of like Jenkins Shired libraries, um, but it's slightly different. It's based on referencing files in Git using a Git tag, basically, with a very simple override model that you can then override locally any of the values. So it's it's, Totally different to Jenkins Shared Libraries, but it's vaguely conceptually like it. It's trying to solve a similar problem. The really, the thing I really like, now you might find this using stuff a little bit weird when you first look at it, but the thing I really, really like about it is once you get your head around it, it's mechanical and simple. There's no programming, there's no weird functions to test. It's literally just sharing YAML. Um, and there's various tools, command line tools in the Jenkins community too. Uh, visualize the effective pipeline that would be run if you use the pipeline. So you can kind of understand what's going to happen before it happens and various things like that. I hope that helps. Um, if you raise issues on the Jenkins uh, Tekton plugin, if you're at all interested in the user stuff, or pop by the Jenkins X Slack channel and we can just talk about it. And I'll post that in the chat. Um, but it's worth remembering none of this is necessary for the Tekton plugin in Jenkins. You could just use 100% vanilla Jenkins. Uh, um, well, Hansen, Vanilla Jenkins and Vanilla Tekton without the user stuff. The user stuff is completely optional and it's up to you to use it. I posted on one of the chats earlier, by the way, um, I saw a blog recently about a company that looked at Jenkins X and for whatever reason decided it didn't quite fit their use. So they end up building something very Jenkins X-like. They need hit this problem as well. How do we reuse pipelines across repositories, allowing customization, but maximizing sharing? And they went a slightly different route to the user's approach. They went with Customize, which is a, a, a Kubernetes tool that lets you take some shared YAML and then customize it by overriding things, which is another way of doing the same thing. So if, if the user's thing doesn't kind of gel with how your brain works or your team, Customize is another option. I personally find Customize quite complex. I, I find it, it, it even harder to use than the user's stuff. The user's stuff once you get your head around it, it's really quite simple, whereas customized can be a bit complicated. But, you know, try both. I mean, use one or the other. It's worth saying as well, sorry, I've been rambling about this for quite a bit, Tekton itself does have a reuse mechanism built in. 
Tecton pipelines let you reuse a task. So you can reference a task in Git, um, which is great. The only downside with a task reuse in Tecton is you can't change it. You can basically just reuse a task and that's it. And if you want to add a command line argument to the Maven deploy step, you basically have to fork the whole task somewhere else and make a new version of the task. And then you have to reference a new version. And then before you know it, everyone's got their own forks of everything everywhere and you get in this kind of a big mess. So that Tecton doesn't yet have a step reuse mechanism, which is what the user stuff does. I hope it does at some point. There's a few pull requests and uh, extension proposals in the Tecton community to do that. And I really, really hope Tecton gets it eventually, but right now uses is the, is the best I've seen. Sorry for the long answer. Thanks for the details. Looks like we need another meetup about uh, Jenkins and Tecton catalog integrations. Well, good topic to consider for the next uh, months. Okay, uh, so there are a few questions left. I suggest to firstly finish uh, with uh, the presentation. Uh, there are a few slides left about the future of Tecton client plugin. And then it will be natural to um, answer questions which we still have on the list. And feel free to submit more questions uh, while we are answering. Yeah. Is there this part of the presentation? GitHub, maybe? Yeah, uh, yeah, sorry, I thought so I was speaking. So, um, so what's next for the Tecton plant plugin itself? So right now uh, we uh, had an idea for the Tecton plant plugin to have its own uh, DSL for Tecton uh, so, that we, uh, so that we can just use uh, the pipeline in Jenkins file. And we've started work on that and we have created uh, the Tecton create raw extension for that. And we, as you saw in the example that, that we can use it right now. Uh, so the, in future, we are planning to extend this to, uh, to do some other stuff and see uh, what else we can come up with. And this was also an idea for uh, uh, GSOC. And uh, uh, we, are, we are still looking at uh, how that's going. Um, then, uh, Gareth, could you talk a little more about avoiding taking up an executor? Probably. Yes, I yeah, sure. So um, that's, it, it's, it, it's, probably, it's probably more of an optimization at the moment, but... Um, when the pipeline, when, when we kick off one of these with, with uh, Jenkins, you kind of need to run it through the pipeline on a on an executor um, because it clones the repo and it has access to the workspace. Um, we're we're investigating ways of trying to not do that so we can minimize resources as much as possible on the Jenkins side um, because it executes another you know JVM somewhere that is running and we want to keep that keep that as lightweight as possible so that um, we get better build densities in our clusters. Um, that's, that's the general idea. Then uh, the next one is support files with multiple types. So right now we support YAML. So in the future, we hope to support JSON properly. And also, are we thinking of supporting XML? All right. I think I think it's also having YAMLs with multiple documents in the same file. Um, we we yeah. currently we currently sort of say don't do that because um, it makes it difficult to understand what if, if there are multiple pipeline runs or a pipeline run and a task run in the same file. Um, what logs should we be streaming to the console? It, it sort of it makes it a bit awkward. Um, so we. We, we say don't do that at the moment, but it would be nice to be able to handle some level of that. Um, and that probably leads on to the next point, which is like, yeah, the naming conflicts between the two. So the demo I gave uses the generate name feature in Kubernetes to always get a nice unique name. Um, but there are times when you possibly don't want to do that. You may want to um, uh, name your pipeline something a bit more predictable. Um, and similar to sort of the, 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 the JX um, way where we actually name it based on the branch or the, the pull request number and the build, num build ID as well. Um, so that might be a, um, something that we would look at. If, if you enable the uses syntax or the 
Tecton catalog, the name is based on the repository and the branch and the PR and everything. But yeah, uh, we could maybe do that natively for all Tecton pipelines, maybe. We could probably also uh, use like Jenkins X in the back to kind of uh, like what we are doing right now with the effective pipelines. That's uh, like that's a really good method uh, to get uh, context of the same context all over the pipelines. Yeah. So currently we do uh, Tecton catalog integration that way, and we are, we also have to figure out how to how we can make that better. Um, then after after that, uh, there is a GSOC project idea on Cloud Events plugin right now. And in the future, uh, once that rolls out properly, uh, we will think of how we can get that integrated with the Tecton plugin and maybe, uh, you know, be able to uh, trigger Tecton uh, tasks like through Jenkins through Cloud Events. So that's also something we are thinking about. Or, uh, if it's if it means that we directly trigger uh, Tecton resources through Plugins and not through Jenkins itself, so this is also something uh, something we are working on. So uh, this is what's next, and we uh, we we discuss all these things in our Cloud Native Sig meeting, which happens every Friday. Um, the meeting is up on the Jenkins event, so. Or calendar, and you can check it there. And thank you for joining. Thanks to all the speakers for the presentation. Thanks, Gareth, and Sweephaf, thanks, James. It was a really interesting discussion and uh, yeah, a lot of context. Uh, so, again, we are looking for feedback from uh, all participants. We encourage everyone to try out uh, this plugin and to send feedback through GitHub issues. and. Yeah. There are more demos and relief presentations coming soon, hopefully. So stay tuned. Um, there was one question regarding the roadmap. Uh, so if we re could return back to the previous slide. Uh, so the question is about, is there a plan uh, to add a GitOps pattern support for the Tecton plugin? That's a good question. Not sure the answer though. Uh, well, one way of looking at it is the Tecton plugin can use pipelines in Git and trigger the tech. So you could store the Tecton pipelines in your Git repository and then use GitOps to manage the pipeline. That's a slight different thing to when people talk about GitOps and Kubernetes where you're using a Git repository to do the kubectl apply effectively to deploy applications. Um, I'm not sure if the Tecton plugin is the ideal thing for that. I mean, you could obviously use that. Um, you could make a DIY GitOps solution with the Tecton plugin. But people normally think of tools like Jenkins X or Flux or Argo for, for the last mile. Uh, or Google Config Sync is another tool in that space. Fleet is another one. There's a, there's a bunch of tools like that. I, I think more of the Tecton plugin feels more about doing CI and releases rather than managing production clusters. You probably don't want a Jenkins server in your production cluster just to be able to deploy your applications. Um, Although you, you would be able to use the, make the, the, the published Terraform images, which is something that we can't do at the moment because they, they don't have a shell. Um, so you would, you, you would be able to um, create a pipeline to do a Terraform apply, for instance, um, onto an environment. Yeah, there is the what makes production. You, you need something like a CIA environment or something to run your Terraform to make your cloud infrastructure. So the Jenkins plugin would be ideal for that, um, for you know modifying your Terraform and stuff. It would be ideal. Yes, absolutely right. It's a slight tangent, but the, often the GitOps approach that like WeWorks have been popularizing with things like Flux and Argo and whatnot, it's a, it's a slightly different use case to Terraform. Like Terraform, you tend to run it once to set up your cluster and then you might run it occasionally if your infrastructure changes, but it doesn't have to change that much. But to deploy new versions of microservices, which happen very frequently and very rapidly, it's fairly common to run a deployment agent in your cluster to avoid having to publish root access production cluster admin tokens around the internet or whatever it is. So. Um, 
I'm not sure if people would want to run Jenkins inside production clusters. Um, however, using Jenkins to run your Terraform is a perfect example with the Titan plugin. I think that would be awesome. So thanks for the answer. Uh, the next question, um, uh, there are many stages in Pipeline Ryan, like Docker build, etc. cetera. Is there any way to showing the stages in Jenkins UI? As I understand, we only see build stage in Jenkins UI, which uh, you may implement in Jenkins file. So what about uh, Kipton stages, steps, etc.? We could totally do that. We don't right now, um, but Isn't we could totally, yeah. Isn't it on the roadmap for the plugin? Uh, for like the users to see maybe if, uh, if we can raise an issue about this and then work on it later on. It will be interesting to see the tecton steps and everything like in the Jenkins uh, UI. It will uh, like, so that the user doesn't have to go back to the YAML and then check the, the stuff over there. They can see everything in a nice graph like form in the UI. So that'll be nice. Yeah, it'd be nice to basically make, make it look like a you know, blue ocean, like a full pipeline with steps and whatnot, whereas we're mostly just showing the logs right now. It'd be nice to publish the, the pipeline graph. That would be awesome. Jenkins has API for that, um, and it would be also a good uh, story for pluggable uh, log storage. So you may have seen that we already have implementation. For example, you can uh, store pipeline logs in um, AWS CloudWatch, you can uh, uh, store them in other services. And there is an API under the hood which allows to implement other connectors and potentially we could stream uh, pipeline execution data from other services to Jenkins and display them as natural uh, pipeline graph steps. So architecturally wise, we have it. It's definitely something interesting uh, for Tikton and maybe for many other stories like let's say Jenkins file runner we were discussing recently. Uh, but yeah, uh, as we have said, please submit a ticket if it doesn't uh, exist already, because it's definitely something to discuss for this particular plugin. Something else that I actually failed to demo was um, we support the checks API as well. So when the pipeline runs, um, you get events going back to, for instance, GitHub, um, if, if you've got that, if that's how your, um, your repository is configured. And that works really nicely. So we could add in, um, we could add in support for more information going back onto that. So um, put information about the the tasks and the task runs, um, and potentially log um, back into that API. That's that's also an option. Yeah, just to clarify, does this engine use uh, Checks API uh, plugin in Jenkins, or does it use Tikton implementation? It uses the Checks API plugin in Jenkins. Okay, so basically you can stream uh, uh, these events to any receiver, not just GitHub actions, but for example, uh, there is a yeah. prototype for Slack integration, etc. So any consumer of these uh, check events can uh, be used. Yeah, at the moment, at the moment, we're, we're only really dealing with um, like pipeline is is running, it's completed or it's failed, but we could certainly add in um, more areas around that. That's great. Thanks for the clarification. Um, yeah, there is another question. Uh, pipeline resource was uh, striked out uh, in one of the slides. Is it removed from Tecton? So my understanding is it's still kind of there, but it was left in an alpha state. It wasn't promoted to beta with the rest of the Tecton resources. So, um, I know it, it's like, it, 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 I think they're thinking of it more as an implementation detail rather than something that you actively go and deal with. Um, it could come in handy where in the situation where uh, uh, you're using, you want to use Tecton as well with Jenkins. Uh, there are some things Jenkins could do uh, which Tecton can't. Oh, and you have a, probably have a lot of stuff set up, but you would like to start using Tecton. Uh, so you can use the plugin to kind of like, instead of switching between them uh, continuously, you can just use the plugin to kind of manage everything from Jenkins itself, which would be, which would be nice. So 
uh, but it depends on like use case use case so if you keep switching back to techon because you have a lot of stuff over there and not much stuff on jenkins so uh, it makes sense to just use techon but uh, if you only use a little bit of techon with everything else in jenkins so it makes sense to use the plugin at that point so you don't have to keep switching between the techon dashboard and then the jenkins dashboard Thank you. So the last question we currently have in the list, pipeline resource was, right? Oh, we already answered that. So there was another question, but uh, looks like James answered it asynchronously. So uh, thanks a lot to everyone. Again, we encourage everyone uh, to send feedback to try out this plugin. Uh, we will be also sending a follow-up feedback form um, after the meetup with links to recording slides and uh, we will ask a few questions. So we, if you have a few minutes, we will appreciate if you fill in this feedback form um, and, yeah, and any additional information will be appreciated. Uh, like we said um, in uh, the discussion, there is Cloud Native SIG meeting uh, happening in just two hours. So if you want to join and to have uh, more discussion, you can join this meeting and uh, there will be rather a technical dive. So uh, any hardcore questions uh, are welcome there. And you have two hours to try out the plugin if you want, and then come and ask any questions. Uh, okay. And yeah, uh, right now we will start, we will stop the recording, but you're welcome to stay online. And again, we will have uh, something like 50 minutes for you know, informal, informal discussion, any topics about Tikton, Jenkins, integrations, or basically whatever other topics you would like to bring up in Jenkins. You're welcome to stay and uh, discuss these topics. Thank, thanks again to everyone. And uh, looking forward to meeting you on May 27th. So we will have, uh, uh, an online meetup about uh, Jenkins Kubernetes operator, which is another ongoing project which provides support for managing Jenkins uh, using uh, classic operator solution. And yeah, uh, join us. So thanks all. Any closing uh, notes from uh, others? Okay, Ara, Himandri, James, Garak. If no, thank you and yep, yeah, stay thank online. You. Thank okay. you.